Is there a word from the Lord? Is there a word from the Lord? If you look in the uh, book of John uh, 3.16, uh, there's a familiar uh, verse there. And we like to read it all from 3.16 down to, I believe, the... Um, The 21st verse. I would need and like your prayers. This is a familiar verse and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. For he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are worth in God. I like to try to hang my hat and stay with that that very familiar verse that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son ushers you may be seen that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life uh, you know I was told by uh, I, I was told uh, by a preacher one day uh, someone that came to him and said you know, man, how come every time you preach, your, your message is always about love, love. Every time you preach that, every Sunday, I know you're going to be preaching on love, love. You know, love one another, love them. God loves you. you know? He said, you know, uh, my brother, he said, uh, once you get it right, I'll go on to the next one. You, <laughs> There, there's just not enough love in this world. You know that old song that what the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing we're thinking of. Well, I'm full of songs today. So, but in any case, the message I'd like to talk to you very briefly about is what's love got to do with it? What does love have to do with it. In this verse is a very familiar verse. Uh, we, and those that are even lost, know this verse, John 3.16. When you're watching games, you will see uh, them with, with signs that says, John 3.16, for God so loved the world. In fact, this verse is so much known until it is really, I call it a uh, the gospel in a nutshell. What it really is, is the summation of Christendom, of what we believe and what our faith is based on. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have 
everlasting life. Amen? Oh, yeah. That's Christendom. That's what we believe. That's what we hang our hat on. And you know the funny thing about it? Uh, we say, well, we've heard that verse so much till it almost don't even resonate with us anymore. It's just got that so familiar. But there's something in the Bible that says, you know, wisdom is a principal thing. So seek wisdom. But in all your getting, in all your understanding, you got to get what? Some understanding. We got to study that word and that verse. And so I'm just going to walk you very briefly, if the Lord will, through that verse. Because it is very, very important. You know, that's a, I got that, that from, uh, took you from uh, 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 y'all probably too young to remember. But back in the 80s, there was a very famous singer by the name of Tina Turner, and she made a racket. Now, y'all know that y'all didn't, y'all, just old people like me, we used to dance to that, and you know how we was in those days. Mm hmm You said, what's love got to do with it? What's love but a secondhand emotion? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broke. Uh, 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 huh? Y'all know that they used to rap on that song. My cousin, my cousin is, is young, but his daddy taught him that. He's a rap on that song. I want to talk to you very briefly about the greatest love story ever told. I want to just briefly, the greatest love story ever told. I'm talking about a love that's that's greater than your mama and your daddy. I'm talking about love that has gone deeper than George and Ima. Love that is greater than your father or your mother's love for you or a love that is much deeper than you have for your own children. You know, we misunderstand that word love and we, like a penny, we overuse it so much that we use it for, I love my car, or, uh, I, I love ice cream, I love pie, you know, I, I love, I love that seat, I love that church. But really in the Greek, we have three words, really there's four, that leads to it was eros, which deals with sexual love, uh, phileos, I believe that is, which, uh, which deals with love in general, and then we have agape love. And that love means that, that, that you can't buy it. It is, it is just there. It's unconditional. Uh, no matter what you do, no matter how, what type of person you are, it's just there. Real love. You know, that kind of love is, when we think of agape love, sometimes we place it uh, not just on both parents, but on the mother's love. Because we say a mother will love you no matter what. Uh, a son could kill, steal, rob, and be in jail, and uh, mama will still say, that's my baby. Uh, you can go to mama when everything else fails and falls through. Now daddy going to depart of justice. But that mother's love, as great as it is, is only a tenth of the love of God as for you. Unmerited, unconditional, unearned. Anyway, so I want to go over just a, a few uh, uh, things, uh, uh, which I was going to tease my brothers there for a minute, because there are so many love songs and stuff that was even to the positive. I, uh, anybody remember a little Milton song that, that uh, about, uh, no, you don't. <laughs> I'm going to who? Wait a minute. It said he loved someone so much that 
that a lady so much he said that he would he would work eight days a week. <laughs> and there's only seven days in a week. Now that's how deep your love is. That's how deep he could love brother. You know we should use that. We should use them songs in the day to talk to them ladies. That's how we learn how to rap. Some we got, a oh, lot of we sure didn't. But there's four things I want to talk to you very briefly about it. First of all, the proof of love. The proof of love. God so loved the world. The greatest lover, God. The Bible tells us God is love. Uh, not love is God, but the very essence of God is love. If, if you had to describe God, you would first say God is love. Uh-huh. That's, that's the very, that's the very fact that God is the greatest of lovers. If God was not the greatest of lovers, then where will you and I be? If God was not the greatest of lovers, there would be no reason for you to be sitting in those seats and no reason for me to be standing here because God so loved you that he gave. God, the greatest of lovers, love you. Even when you have to explain the very character of Christendom, you have to talk about love. If you look in Galatians, and it, it, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, which is the very character and nature of God. It starts first with love. God is love. So we must be loved. This congregation must be loved. A whole church of nothing but love. New hope is love. But to what degree is the most important thing? God loved us to the greatest degree. Because the Bible says, and these are Jesus' words, not only did God love us, the Bible says that God so loved us. He didn't just love us. He so loved us. To the greatest degree that you could love. He loved. And who was the greatest receiver of that love? The world. Us. Red, yellow, black, white. Polka dot, red, stripe, God loves you. Rich, poor, old, young, fat, skinny, ugly, good looking, God loves you. Homosexual, alcoholic. Drug get it, drug get it. God loves you. There's no exception in, in God's kingdom. Uh, there's no exception for love for God. God don't leave nobody out. He didn't even leave the thief that was on the cross, the murderer.
Don't that make you feel great? Hey, it makes me want to shout. This ain't a shout message, but it makes me want to shout because I know when everything is said and done, when everybody has walked away, God loves me. He'd never leave us. He'll never forsake us. Even through the valley and the shadow of death, He's right there. God loves us. We are the greatest receiver. The greatest receiver, and if you are the greatest receiver, then that means you must be one of the greatest giver. Because the man asked Jesus, he said, what is the greatest commandment? He said that you should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Hello? You can't leave it all out. You can't say we love God and hate our brother or our sisters. That's the greatest commandment. That we must love one another. That's the greatest act. The next is, is he gave. God gave. Yeah, I'm going through all of this. God gave. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not. You know, but he gave. That's the proof of love. It's the giving. He gave. He gave. He gave, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine one time and she, and she said that uh, givers must put limits in their giving because takers never do. <laughs> you gotta put limits on your giving. That's what she said, because takers never do. But you know what? But God, you can just take, you can't beat him giving. You can take and take and he'll give and give and love and love no matter what you've done just a moment ago no matter what your thought was God will still give to you God you can't beat him he's a giver that's the proof you know when when we were young and I'm, I don't want to mention names I don't want to keep founding this but when we were young I remember you know, you go places and they be, you know, uh, you can go and, and, uh, well, now, I ain't been saved all my life, but, you know, I, I always wonder how come people can, I have brothers, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Kelvin know what I'm talking about. You have a brother that share, they will share a joint with you. They'll pass that joint around. They'll drink out the, even the same alcohol bottle. But when you get down on your last luck, when you need some money, when you ask them, man, can I, can I borrow? Can I hit you up? Just a little bit? No, 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 man. No. Next time, I, I ain't got, I ain't got it right now. But thank God for Jesus. You just can't beat him giving, and he will always and keep giving uh, 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 to to you. That's the proof of giving. Third, we're talking about is a gift of love. What is the gift? of love is here's what it says God his, he has gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have he gave the only thing he had 
the thing that's most dear to him, his only begotten son. Now I have, well I had six boys, I have five now. That's my baby right there. And let me tell you, if I had to sacrifice one of them, I couldn't do it. And I wouldn't do it. Uh, 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 neither would you. Uh, for, for somebody like me or somebody like you, no. Uh-uh. Uh, let's just be real. I'm not going to do it. Not one of mine that I love my baby when I know where you have been and, and what you've done, when I know that you've talked about me and, and used me and how the walk was, I would not do it. But God so loved us that he, he gave it. The only thing he had, his only begotten son. What's the greatest opportunity? Whosoever. That's the greatest opportunity. Whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The greatest response is to believe and to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The greatest promise is you shall not perish. You will not die. You shall not. The greatest difference, but. But is the greatest difference. That little word, three-letter word, means a lot. It, 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 it conjoins, it, it, it joins one part with another. It is opposition or is connection. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But, whoso believes in him shall not perish. But, you know, uh, there, there's a story of man, Jesus came to a man one day, Man came to Jesus and he said, Hey, I'll follow you, Master, wherever you want to go, wherever you want me to go. And he said, Well, come follow. He said, I'll follow you, but I got to go home and I got to feed, uh, see my mother and my father, bury them. Came to another man and it was another, but we are full of buts. We, a lot of us live in what I call the billy goat religion. You know, when you come to church, I'll be at church. But, you know, uh, when you say, I'll sing, but, you know, uh, uh, will you do this for me? I'll do this, but, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but, the gift of God is eternal life. But, the gift of God is eternal life. I like that, that kind of but. I like that kind of but in, in, in that. The greatest assurance we have is, is we shall have. You know, every time I, I read that and I see shall have, the greatest assurance, for some reason I think of Reverend Curry. Uh, Reverend Curry voice sounds like uh, uh, my wife just passed, BJ's mother, uh, and she used to sing just like that. She used to sing, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, oh what a forte, holy is mine or something. What is it? Glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase it by God, born of, the born of the Spirit, washed of His blood. It, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, cuz. This is my story. This is my song. Praising the Savior all the day long. That's, that's what Jesus is saying. And that voice, every time I see a hero sing, I think a pair of a, a Peggy, PJ. Is, that's, we have the assurance because God said it. He said, we shall have eternal life. And the last is eternal life. That's the goal. To live with God and Christ forever. 
You can have eternal life two ways. There are two eternal lives. You can live in eternal hell, or you can live and have a life abundantly and live with God. And all that means is that there'll be no more death, no more sickness, no more illness, no more hate, no more violence. Just bliss. Eternal life. None of the same conditions. Not living this same life that we have right here. What's love got to do with it? Everything. Everything. John, the first Corinthians says that, in fact, I'm going to read that to you if I can pronounce it. It says that, that though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I'm nothing. Just a loud noise. That's all. He said, even though you be willing to give your body to be burned, and, and even though you have all faith that you can even move mountains, but if you don't have love, you're nothing. Let me tell you very briefly again, finish this where it says what love is. On 13 it says, love suffers long, is kind. Love in is not. Love on is not itself. Is not puffed up. Do not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not his own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things. Believeth all things, hopeth all things. Love never, never, never fails. Love never fails. What's love got to do with it? Secondhand emotion? I think not. For God commended his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you and for me. I'm going to close because I remember it was, it was early one evening that there were some evil men, hostile men. Those old Sanhedrins they went to a man who had loved everybody. They went to a man who had done no wrong. They whipped him and they spit on him. They placed a crown of thorns down on his brow until the blood came trickling down. They whipped him and they led him out to a place called Golgotha, and there they laid him on an old and rugged cross. They nailed nails in his feet because of our evil ways. They put nails in his hands because of our evil deeds. They hoist him up to between two thieves, and there he hung there between heaven and an earth. The enemy thought he'd won the battle. The enemy, he thought he'd won the war. They took him and they put him in a borrowed tomb because he wasn't going to be there long. But the Bible says that early Sunday morning, he got up out of a dark and dingy grave and said all power both heaven and earth is in my hand 
You see, we don't understand the importance of the cross. We forget the blood that Jesus shed on the cross for you, for me. Because you see, if it wasn't for the cross, there would have been no death. And if there was no death, there would have been no resurrection. And if there was no resurrection, there would have been no grace. If it wasn't for grace, there would be no you and I. For grace, God's grace, God's amazing grace was what saved a wretch like you and like me.